you're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. She's not dangerous. She's just a princess. The danger comes if she gets out. Which she will, unless you do something about it. The more specifics you have, the harder it will be for you to do this very important job. She's a princess. People will listen to her, because listening to her is in their nature. And when they do, everything will come crashing down. I guess we'll just have to see what happens, but a word of warning. If you go in prepared to hear her out, she could easily trap you in her web of lies. And the more you listen to her honeyed words, the harder it'll be to pull yourself out. Then each and every one of us is doomed. So sure, go talk to her. See how that turns out for all of us. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? It's commanding. Almost as though she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Good. You're still listening to reason. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. Are you here to kill me or something? So, why'd you bring a knife with you? How about you drop it and then we can chat? She makes a compelling point. What if we just dropped the blade and talked? Look at her, it's not like she's a threat. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. Killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. You ignore the trembling in your hands and tighten your grip on the blade. Poor thing. Your hands are shaking. Are you scared of me? Because you should be. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. Do you hear the conviction in her voice? Do you see the razor sharpness in her gaze? I don't think she's bluffing. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. Doubt, unfortunately, clouds your thoughts as you attempt to run her through. A moment of distraction and hesitation is all she needed to sidestep your thrust and deliver a catastrophic blow to your jaw. It feels like you've been hit with a sledgehammer. You can feel bone grinding on bone where your jaw has been fractured. Holy shit, that hurts! Though she's unarmed, the shock of that first strike is enough to stagger you, putting you and the princess on the somewhat equal footing. Your blade slashes through the air again and again, and her fists connect with your body as many times or more, each impact as heavy as that first bone-crushing hit. We can still turn this around. 
You and the princess stare at each other, both gasping for breath, equally exhausted. You probably won't make it out of here alive, but you can at least make sure that she won't make it out of here, either. Excuse me? Do you think this is what I wanted to happen? I have a duty to state the facts of the situation, and honestly, it's a miracle anyone is still standing right now. Can you not feel all those ruptured organs bouncing around in there? If the princess doesn't do our friend in herself, internal bleeding is certain to finish the job. The two of you clash for the final time. You feel your ribs break as she delivers a heavy blow, but you push through the pain, falling forward and sinking your blade deep into the princess's heart. Oh. The two of you fall to the floor. This was fun. The princess gasps, her voice an unhealthy rasp as her lungs start to fill with blood. You put up more of a fight than I thought you would, but I have to wonder, do you really think this is the end? There it is again. That razor-sharp look in her eyes, and the terrifying conviction in her words. But you don't have the time to worry over such things. Everything goes black, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I can assure you that you didn't slay her and that she didn't kill you. People don't just spring back to life after dying, and the two of us are meeting for the very first time. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. There's nothing we can do to stop her. She's going to kill us again. Uh, is there another one of us in here? If you go to the cabin, you might as well just throw yourself at her feet and beg for mercy. You are never going to slay her with that attitude. Stuff that pathetic little voice to the back of your mind and stay focused on the task ahead. I have one last warning for you. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. It's not her lies that'll stop us. I must admit, I'm a little worried about going back in there. I don't want to be as much of a downer as my new roommate, but we were definitely outclassed last time. She seems more demon than princess. Ignore them, they don't know what they're talking about. She's just a princess. Don't get all in your head about it. The interior of the cabin is larger than it should be. The only item of furniture is a plain wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an old wooden staircase. The steps are wide and deep. The air seeping up from below is heavy and oppressive, with an odd, eggy stink to it. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her fierce voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? It's somehow even fiercer than it was before. Of course it is. Don't let it intimidate you. You carefully make your way down the stairs. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view, a large shackle leading from her wrist to the basement wall. Is it just me, or is she bigger than last time? It looks like she could rip those chains out of the wall without a second thought. I told you. It's pointless. I was wondering when I might have company. Free me from my bindings, and maybe I'll let you live for a while. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Are you serious? No, you have to do it. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not gonna go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. 
Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. How many times do I have to tell you how dangerous letting her out of here would be before it finally sinks in? Wait, really? You're here to rescue me? I, I was starting to think I'd be stuck down here forever. Come downstairs. I want to see the face of my rescuer. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. I can't believe you're here. I've been waiting for something like this to happen forever. I hope you brought something to deal with these chains. Don't do it. If she gets out of those chains, we're all one step closer to the end. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. Okay. I'll be here. Good luck. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you. The clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. <sighs> Fine. Against your better judgment, you place the blade against the ragged, self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. Her limb falls to the ground, and the heavy chains follow suit. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. No, she didn't. She clutches the wound, softly smiling as her gaze meets yours. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I 
can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing? Stop that. Oh, I thought this was all a little too easy. Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges. Wait, she dodges? Stop it! Stop trying to resist me! I'm trying to get you out of here alive! The blade! Move the blade! I'm sorry. I can see you're doing your best to resist what's happening to you. I'll try and make this quick. She pounces on you with the same animal ferocity she used to tear through her arm. You feel her claws on your throat, then her teeth, somehow sharp enough to pull apart your flesh and sing you with ease. You collapse to the floor, your body unresponsive as your blood pools on the ground beneath you. She stares down at your ravaged form, eyes shining in the darkness, dress stained red as your blood seeps into the fabric. When she manages to escape from this place and bring ruin to the world, know that it was all your fault. It can't just end like this, right? As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. I'm sorry, but it's over. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. My tricks. What on earth are you talking about? We've just met for the first time, you and I. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Don't forget what he did to us the last time around. We can help her. We just have to find a way. Huh? Is there another one of us in here? Help her? Need I remind you how catastrophically dangerous she is? I told you about the stakes of this situation less than a minute ago. Sure, and all of us in here definitely believe you. <sighs> just stay focused on the task at hand. You know I can tell when you're lying, right? Please take this seriously, I am begging you. I have one last warning for you. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Yes, yes, don't believe a word she says. Just go in, take the knife, and do what you're supposed to. Wink. Did you just say the word wink out loud? No, I didn't. Wink. Just ignore this clown and focus on the princess. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely empty. The air stale and musty, the floor and walls covered in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice carries softly up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. It's even more hypnotizing than before. Is it more hypnotizing than or is that just what we want it to be? I think we're in love. For everyone's sake, you're not in love. <sighs> just don't let her charm you. It's all part of the manipulation. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's still so beautiful. And she has both of her arms again. Did everything we just went through actually happen? It must have, because she's different. Can't you tell? You! I remember you. You're going to help me get out of here, right? You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin 
is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she is dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and is about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Seriously? You're just going to turn around and leave? Do you even know where you're going? suppose you just quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. Good. What we're being asked to do here is wrong. Better to wash our hands of this whole situation than to take part in it. Ignore that annoying little voice, he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's strange. It looks like this path also leads to the cabin. How convenient. Everything's back on track again. Maybe the world can still be saved after all. really keen on wasting everyone's time, aren't you? It's remarkably selfish, if you ask me. I've already outlined the stakes of the situation. If you don't do your job, everyone dies. Like, dies, dies. Forever. Stakes and consequences aren't emotional blackmail. They're facts of life, and if you had an ounce of maturity, you'd understand that. Fine, you turn around and trek back down the path you came. Oh, would you look at that? You're at the cabin again. Now, I'm not normally one for superstition or astrology, but I have to say, it seems like the universe itself is doing its best to bring you to your fated confrontation with the princess. There's always a choice. Let me tell you right now that you're making the wrong one for pretty much everyone who has ever lived, as well as for everyone who ever will. And here we go. As you trudge into the woods, something strange starts to happen. At first, it's little flickers out of the corner of your eyes. Glimpses of familiar wooden structures through the leaves. But as you focus on your surroundings, you start to realise that those flickers weren't just a trick of light. In every direction, there is a path a cabin. And not just a cabin, THE cabin. An infinite fractal of paths and cabins desperately trying to draw you back to where you need to be. Wait, what's going on? But you're too stubborn for that, aren't you? It doesn't matter how many paths or cabins appear around you, you're just going to do whatever you can to shirk your responsibility, because you care more about irritating me than you do about the fate of the world. You've doomed us all, you know that, right? But of course you do, otherwise you wouldn't just wander off into the forest in search of certain death. You lose track of just how long you spend aimlessly tromping through the wilderness. But it's not like any of that time spent lost in the woods really matters, because it isn't long before the world ends and everyone dies. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. terrible sense of deja vu. No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us has been here. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Yeah, screw this guy. They might have walled off everything but the path to the cabin, but I'm sure there's plenty of other ways we can ruin his day. If by ruining my day, you mean ruining everyone's day forever, then yes, I suppose there are plenty of ways you could pull that off. 
Still, the world really did end last time, didn't it? We should be careful. You are never going to slay her with that attitude. Stuff those pathetic little voices to the back of your mind and stay focused on the task ahead. You know I can tell when you're lying, right? Please take this seriously, I am begging you. I have one last one for you. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Maybe we should believe her. Maybe she isn't a liar. Ignore them, they're just being difficult for the sake of it. The interior of the cabin is odd, the air smelling faintly of plastic, the wood of the walls fitting together at uncomfortable angles. The only furniture is a plain wooden table, its legs all the wrong lengths, causing it to tilt towards the door. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. If he wants us to take it, maybe we should just leave it to collect dust. Or better yet, grab it and throw it out the window. What good is a knife against a world-ending monstrosity anyways? I for one would rather have it. We don't really know what we're dealing with here. I've already told you what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a princess. How many times do I have to explain this incredibly simple and straightforward premise? You take the blade from the table. It'd be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an old wooden staircase. The steps are warped and shoddily constructed. The air seeping up from below is heavy, oppressive, with an odd stink to it. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs, its multi-tonal lilt adding to the already uneasy atmosphere. <sighs> This isn't what I expected her to sound like. What is she? I think we'd all like to know. You carefully make your way down the stairs. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. She locks eyes with you, one moving a little faster than the other. The loose skin of her face stretches into something resembling a smile. Good lord. Something in her neck bulges, roiling under her skin as she starts to speak, her voice pouring out between her closed teeth. Don't be a stranger. It's been so long since I had a friend. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. That's the spirit. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. 
You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Good. You're still listening to reason. It would be better if you had a weapon, but you may still be able to do what needs to be done. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi! Do you think you can get me out of these chains? Okay... I'm locked up down here for a reason. I don't actually know what that reason is, but you don't just stuff a princess in a basement and throw away the key without there being some sort of an explanation, right? You have all the explanation you need. You should know better than to trust whatever she comes up with. That seems like a pretty good compromise. I don't think I could bear being down here that much longer. Leaving her alive is too risky. If you don't deal with her soon, she will find a way out. So I'm the only one who liked that idea. <sighs> one way or another, I'm going to find a way out of here. It would make it easier for both of us if you'd help. But if you don't, I can promise that you'll regret that decision. You have to make a choice. Let's hope for all our sakes it's the right one. I know you think this is some kind of fair compromise, but it isn't. No one wins here. It's a chance we'll have to take. We can make this work if we just stay here and keep watch. No one has to die. Where are you going? You can't just leave me here. You turn your back to the princess and make your way back to the stairs. Fine. Turn your back on me. But it won't be long before I slip these chains. And once I'm out of here, there will be hell to pay for leaving me behind. Slip these chains. She can't, right? She needed our help to get out of here. But do you hear the conviction in her voice? I don't think she's bluffing. Either way, she dropped the mask, didn't she? You can still grab the blade and get back down here. It'll be the death of all of us, but fine. We'll do it your way. You close the basement door, locking it behind you and quickly barricading it with a heavy wooden table that once held the blade. Okay, we can make this work. You settle in against the far wall to watch the basement door. It isn't long before you start to drift off, your eyelids heavy with fatigue. But sleep doesn't come. Instead, your rest is broken by a piercing, wailing voice calling out to you from the other side of the door. I know you're still there. Why don't you make things easier on yourself and let me out? It's not like this little door I'll hold for very long anyways. Probably a good idea to try to get back on my good side. She sounds terrifying. Like she's less of a princess you saw and more like something out of a nightmare. As she violently rattles the door, you do your best to shut her out of your mind. When I get out of here, I'm going to pick you apart piece by piece. I won't forget what you did, and I'll never forgive it. You don't know the kind of enemy you've made tonight. Doesn't sound like she's getting any weaker. No, it doesn't. Just ignore her. Maybe the banging and wailing will stop and you just don't pay attention to her. You put the princess's threats out of your mind as best you can and huddle up against the wall. You jolt awake in the middle of the night to silence in the cabin. The ruckus has stopped and the door to the basement is ajar. It's locked broken, and the table shoved out of the way. Where is she? Thanks for helping me get out of that awful basement. You try and stumble to your feet, but as the princess draws near, it's as though your body simply stops working. 
It isn't all at once. The paralysis comes in waves. First your toes go numb, and then your feet, and then your legs. You lie prone on the floor of the cabin, unable to do anything but witness her approach. Whose side are you on? Yours, of course. But I have a duty to uphold the truth. Lying about the facts of the situation doesn't change them. So helpless. I can take my time with you, can't I? She steps closer, one silent footfall at a time, cocking her head in curiosity as you feel your organs shutting down one by one. Or maybe I can't take my time with you. You don't look well. A little green around the gills. What a shame. If you'd only help me get out of here, we could have done such wonderful things together. Your lungs stop drawing in breath, and your heart freezes in your chest. You have seconds left. I'd say better luck next time, but we both know this is the end, don't we? It can't be. This can't actually be how everything ends. I'm sorry, but it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. A terrible sense of deja vu. No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us has been here. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Are we sure we don't just want to turn around and hightail it out of here? She's going to do unspeakable things to us if we go back there. Oh, is there another one of us in here? You're a voice of reason, right? Tell them we shouldn't go to the cabin. Tell them we shouldn't even bother. You are never going to slay her with that attitude. Stuff that pathetic little voice to the back of your mind and stay focused on the task ahead. Seriously? You're just going to turn around and leave? Do you even know where you're going? Thank you. The whole world owes you a debt of gratitude. Really. I have one last one for you. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Oh god, we can't go in there. Do either of you feel sick? Because I feel sick just thinking about that place. We're going to die. You should be careful. There's something very wrong going on here. Ignore them. They don't know what they're talking about. She's just a princess. No reason to get all freaked out. The interior of the cabin is plain, the smooth wood of the walls almost featureless. The only item of furniture is a lone table, knocked on its side in the corner of the room. A pristine blade stands between you and the open, inviting basement doorway. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. No, 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 The basement door, it isn't there anymore. She could be anywhere. It's just, it's just a frame. She's already got now, hasn't she? And she's ready for us. She's been waiting. No, no, what did you do? This isn't how things are supposed to go. She's supposed to be an ordinary princess. Quick, the blade. Go ahead and take your little toy. It won't do you any good. Your legs go numb before you even have a chance to reach for the blade. You collapse to the floor as your lungs seize up, refusing to take in air. No, not again! I didn't think you'd come back. We're gonna have a lot of fun, you and I. I wonder how many times I'll get to play with you before you break. Everything goes dark, and you die. I'm sorry. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world.
You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? It's commanding. Almost as though she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Good. You're still listening to reason. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. Are you here to kill me or something? You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. Do you hear the conviction in her voice? Do you see the razor sharpness in her gaze? I don't think she's bluffing. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. You lunge forward without a moment's hesitation. You feel flesh easily give way and look down to see your blade already sinking deep into her heart. Oh. This is it, isn't it? I'm almost embarrassed. I should have seen that coming, but I have to wonder. Do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? There it is again. That razor-sharp look in her eyes and the terrifying conviction in her words. Yes, even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and well. But it's over, isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago. That arrogant look still plastered on her face. But is it over? Really over? It's over. Don't get all worked up. With your work done, you make your way back upstairs, closing the door to the basement behind you. Why do I feel like we've done something terrible? You did kill someone. Greater good or not, something would be very wrong with you if you didn't feel at least a little bad. But it was for the greater good. One of these days that will sink in and help ease your guilty conscience. But that day isn't today. Let's just get out of here. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Only, a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is nothing at all. Where a lush forest stood mere minutes ago, the only thing in front of you now is the vast emptiness of space. What happened? Everyone is fine. It's just that you and the cabin are now far away from them. Don't worry. You'll be safe here. This is good. Everyone is happy. You'll be happy. This isn't an ending. In fact, now that the princess has been slain, endings are a thing of the past. No. This is the beginning of eternity. Your reward. This is what's best for everyone. Trust me.
Time passes. You can't be sure if it's days, or months, or years, or even decades. It's all a wonderful, boring blur. You've never been happier. Psst. Hey. We're not just gonna stay here forever, right? Are we really happy? Or is he just telling us that we are? Good, because I have an idea to get us out of here. Though you're probably not going to like it. The blade. We can use the blade to get out of this. I can hear everything you say, little voice. There's only one thing it would want you to use that blade on. And I'm afraid that thing is you, dear hero. He's right. It's the only way out. Do you hear that? It wants to take this happiness away from you. It wants this wonderful place to end. Do you not? There's more for us to do, and the only way for us to do it is to take that blade and use it. Don't you dare. How astute. You are absolutely correct. Using the blade to kill yourself would kill you, and you shouldn't do it. In a sense we'd die, but looking at things from another angle, are we even really alive anymore? This place, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing, it's just the same thing, constantly, forever. I know this is out there, but trust me, I know using the blade will work. That little voice didn't want you to slay the princess. It didn't want you to be happy. If we die, die, you can yell at me all you want. I made this happy little place for you. Is this not a good enough reward for saving the world? An eternity of bliss? You, you ingrate. Fine. Whatever. For the first time since time stopped meaning anything, you throw open the door to the basement and walk down the stairs. The princess's body is dust and bones, though the blade you used to slay her is still as pristine as the day you first held it. You pick up the blade, you stab yourself, and you die. The end. Nice knowing you. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path, is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. My tricks? What on earth are you talking about? We've just met for the first time, you and I. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. That's fine. It wasn't very hard to kill her last time. We'll just do it again. Is there another one of us in here? I've always been here. I've just gotten a little... louder. And I'm ready for all of us to have a marvellous time. <sighs> just stay focused on the task at hand. sure I'm a fan of my new roommate. I think there's a lot more to this situation than we've been told. The situation couldn't be more straightforward. Just ignore him. The interior of the cabin is cold, a soft odour of dirt permeating the air. Cobwebs flutter in the corners. You can hear wind whistling outside, banging the shutters against the windows. The only item of furniture is an elegant antique table with a pristine blade perched on the edge. Before you have a chance to even think about taking it, the top of a hand appears from underneath the floorboards. Two deep-set eyes stare up at you, followed by a mischievous skeletal grin. And finally, the rest of the body floats up to join the head. Oh, wait, this isn't right. What's going on here? A g-g-g-ghost! Oh, wow. How absolutely terrifying. What's a ghost supposed to do to us? Oh, it's you. Hiya, killer. I guess we've got some things to talk about, haven't we? Like how you murdered me?
you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? You've made it this far, you might as well reach the end of your journey. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning, before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not gonna go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotising. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Good. You're still listening to reason. It would be better if you had a weapon, but you may still be able to do what needs to be done. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. Do you think you can get me out of these chains? You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. Maybe there's some way to break the chains? If that doesn't work, I guess we can always cut me out of them. She offers the suggestion with almost complete nonchalance. If we were stuck down here long enough, I'm sure we'd be nonchalant about cutting our way out if it meant we could finally be free. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? You make your way to the bottom of the stairs, this would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you. The clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. 
You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. Without hesitation, we bring the blade down and plunge it into the princess's back. Finally. The wound drives her to the ground. Okay, there's no going back now. I'm with you to the end. You, you bastard. Were you lying to me this whole time? The princess pushes away from you, the motion ripping the blade from her back. Wounded, but still alive, she crouches on all fours in the corner of the room and meets your eyes with the ferocity of a cornered predator. You've made a terrible enemy, and there's nothing in the world that can possibly save you from me. Do you hear the conviction in her voice? Do you see that razor sharpness in her gaze? I don't think she's bluffing. I thought we had the upper hand, but it's as if she's barely even threatened by us. It's an act. She's wounded and unarmed. There's nothing she can do to hurt you. I'm not so sure. Don't waver now. As you ready your blades to deliver a lethal blow, she lunges at your legs with the same animal ferocity she used to tear at her arm. Your knife cuts into her again, and again as you're tackled to the ground, your body racked with pain as she rips into you with tooth and claw. Forget about trying to rescue her. This is about survival now. Give her everything you've got. Though your nerves are seizing with pain, you know you've done your fair share of damage as well, your blade having left deep gashes in the princess's back. You seize a moment of hesitation to throw her off of you, and shakily push yourself back to your knees. We can still turn this around. You steal your resolve and take another step closer to the princess. You probably won't make it out of here alive, but you can still make sure that she won't make it out of here. Excuse me? What's this about not making it out of here alive? Do you think this is what I wanted to happen? I have a duty to state the facts of the situation, and honestly, it's a miracle anyone in this room is still standing right now. Don't act so surprised. Can you not feel all those gashes and holes pulling our friend apart? If the princess doesn't do them in here, blood loss is certain to finish the job. You take another step forward, and the princess lunges towards you. The two of you enter one last exchange, a flurry of blade and claw and fleshy ribbons. And then you stop. Neither you nor princess able to go in further. You collapse on the ground, and the princess collapses beside you. Blood pools around you both, and you watch each other fade away. After all this time alone, I thought I'd finally found a friend, but you were just another monster, weren't you? Silence, as the room starts to get fuzzy around you. You've paid a terrible price, but you've saved us all. It's over. If you think this is it, you're sorely mistaken. One way or another, I'll make sure you pay for this. There is again. That razor-sharp look in her eyes and that terrifying conviction in her words. But you don't have the time left to worry about such things. Everything goes black, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I can assure you that you didn't slay her and that she didn't kill you. People don't just spring back to life after dying, and the two of us are meeting for the very first time. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. I can still feel each and every puncture and laceration. That beast hurt us. But we are going to hurt her back. Oh, is there another one of us in here? Good. It seems like your head's in the right place. If you can all just stay focused on the task at hand, the princess will be good and slain in no time at all. I have one last one for you. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. He's right, you know. She's a clever one, and determined too. Keep your eyes open and your senses sharp, because we're not going to let her get the best of us again. Ignore him, she's just a princess. Don't overestimate her. The interior of the cabin is ruinous and dilapidated. It feels like no one has lived here for a long time, wind rushing in through cracks and holes in the wooden walls. The only item of furniture is a plain, termite-eaten table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. 
The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Yes, do it. Take the blade and make her pay for what she's done. You take the blade from the table. It'd be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. The door to the basement creeps open, revealing what's left of an old wooden staircase. It's still sturdy enough that you can make your way down in one piece, though you'll have to step over a few holes. The air seeping up from below is oddly warm and wet, as if you're stepping down into a jungle. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. She growls up the stairs. I can smell you. It isn't hypnotizing anymore. It's almost feral. Don't let her intimidate you. You carefully make your way down the stairs. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view, a large shackle leading from her wrist to the basement wall. You, you're the reason I'm still down here. Fiend, monster, betrayer. Nothing will get between my teeth and your throat. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not gonna go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? It's commanding, almost as though she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Good. You're still listening to reason. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. Are you here to kill me or something? You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. Do you hear the conviction in her voice? Do you see the razor sharpness in her gaze? I don't think she's bluffing. She's unarmed. 
If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. You lunge forward without a moment's hesitation. You feel flesh easily give way and look down to see your blade already sinking deep into her heart. Oh. This is it, isn't it? I'm almost embarrassed. I should have seen that coming, but I have to wonder. Do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? There it is again. That razor-sharp look in her eyes and the terrifying conviction in her words. Yes. Even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and well. But it's over, isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago, that arrogant look still plastered on her face. But is it over? Really over? Yes, exactly. It's over. With your work done, you make your way back upstairs closing the door to the basement behind you. Why do I feel like we've done something terrible? You did kill someone. Greater good or not, something would be very wrong with you if you didn't feel at least a little bad. But it was for the greater good. One of these days that will sink in and help ease your guilty conscience. But that day isn't today. Let's just get out of here. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Only, a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is nothing at all. Where a lush forest stood mere minutes ago, the only thing in front of you now is the vast emptiness of space. What happened? Everyone is fine. It's just that you and the cabin are now far away from them. Don't worry. You'll be safe here. This is good. Everyone is happy. You'll be happy. This isn't an ending. In fact, now that the princess has been slain, endings are a thing of the past. No. This is the beginning of eternity. Your reward. This is what's best for everyone. Trust me. Time passes. You can't be sure if it's days, or months, or years, or even decades. It's all a wonderful, boring blur. You've never been happier. Psst. We're not just gonna stay here forever, right? Really? Well, if you ever change your mind, just let me know, I guess. More happy time passes, though the word begins to lose its meaning. Time, that is, not happy. Happy still has plenty of meaning. Please, shake yourself out of it. We have to get out of here. The little voices, please, fall on deaf ears. Eventually, you pass into a blissful state of pure existence. Though words like eventually and pass ceased to have any meaning to you long before that shift, you simply exist. Happy. Forever. <laughs>